And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower. Today we're talking about a game called Pick a Paint. Um, paint by numbers is a very popular thing with youngsters, especially when you can pick whatever colors, which is why you then have green people with blue hair. <laughs> but this is a game that allows you to paint, but this is almost a game that teaches you how to use a matrix, how to place colors so that the same color is not in a different column or a different row. Look at the game. At the beginning of the game, you take 20 objects and you are going to randomly shuffle those and place them out. It really doesn't matter too much and each object is numbered. Each player is going to be given three cards for their hand. These cards are going to show a variety of colors or seven different colors included with the game. And then players take turns in the cooperative game. So let's say I go first, I say okay, I start with number one, I'm painting the ball pink, and I put pink on top of the ball, and you can also see the number one there. Then it would be Melody's turn. I'm painting the trash can blue. Now, can you put a pink one there? No. Because there's already a pink one in this column, and you can't have the same color twice in a column. So for example, I'm on going to be doing number three over here, the book, I can't put blue there because blue's already in that row. So I say, okay, I'll paint the book uh, yellow for number three. And then Melody's turn again. And number four is over here in the corner. I'm painting the pale orange. And then I'll paint the bottle purple. And then Melody's turn again. And we continue going on where it's six is right there, the hammer. And so she paints the hammer a color. Green. And then I would paint the hat pink, which I can do because there's no pink in that row or that column. But there's eventually going to come a point where you cannot play something in a column or row. Let's say, for example, all I have in my hand here is pink and purple for number eight. I can't put purple there because purple's already in that row, and I can't put pink there because pink is in that column. When that happens, I simply discard a card from my hand, draw one to take its place, and pass. If we go through the whole deck like doing that, then we're going to lose. Now, because there's seven cards of each color, and there's four of each type, which gives you 28 different uh, color cards, the chance of that happening is kind of small, especially as players will learn eventually that maybe if you have one that goes in very close to another one, perhaps it's not best to put the same color, or you should put the same color if possible, because that way it allows you a chance to put a different color in that row or column. That's the co cooperative game. Everyone works together. You paint the whole thing with different colors. Everybody cheers, and the game is over. <laughs> now, the competitive version is very similar, except in this version, when you put a color down, you put the color down face down. So I would say, okay, I'm painting the ball purple, and I put it face down. Everyone saw that I played purple, but now you have to remember it. And then Melody would go with number two, and go I'm ahead. I'm painting the trash can orange. Okay, and as you place these, you're still trying to follow the rule of putting down the different colors and the different columns and such. Because once there is a card on every color, we then start over again, and the person who placed the number one will reveal the number one. So I will turn this over and say, okay, I put the purple down, and then Melody will turn hers over number two, and that's orange, that's okay. I will turn over number three, green. I'm okay. She would turn over number four. Blue, she's okay. I would turn over number five. Purple, I'm still okay. But if we would turn one over and there's a mistake, let's say we turned over 11 here and it was a purple and it, I'm the one who put it down, then I would have to take this card as a point and you do not want points. And so that's the co competitive way to play the game. It's the same thing. You're trying not to have the same colors in the same rows or columns but now there's a memory element added because as you put them down, you have to remember what color goes where. As with all the games in the uh, Bright Ideas game line from Playroom Entertainment, the cards are very thick. I like the fact that they have these holes in it. For one thing, you know, you can twirl it around. But really, it's so that when you put it on the other card, which is not colored, and so you add the dash of color, then you can still see the number throughout. And the cards are good quality. 
The objects are simple objects that are around most people's houses, so people will be able to say, oh, there's a bottle, there's scissors, and the colors also. It, it, it's, it's a good color recognition game. And when playing the cooperative version, I'm able to play all the way down with a two- or three-year-old because you just say, oh, you can't play blue there because it's not, not it's already in that column and row. When you're playing a competitive version, then you're going to have a little bit more of a uh, struggle because the older kids are going to remember, while the younger kids they might remember, but mixing memory with the color matrix is a little bit confusing. So I would say for the game, the competitive version, uh, most kids will be able to play that, but the cooperative version is for all kids, even young kids. And it's a lot of fun, a lot of color. What do you think? I like how they like put most of the rainbow colors except for pink. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, kids like rainbows a lot. When there's like a rainbow outside, it's really pretty. But when you like put it down, it's like like upside down. It's like hard to remember which one's which since there's 20 numbers. It's really hard. And it is much harder for the competitive version, but that's the version I make her play. Because it's more challenging and it's one that we'll have more fun with. It is that too. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.